Hello, this is Riding with Ree. Now, you might remember that last year I tried out some of Horse and Country's masterclasses at home and showed you how I adapted the professionals masterclass for me and my horse at home. Well, of course, as we're all in lockdown, Horse and Country has continued to make incredible content on their platform, including a new series with Simon Grieve called From Field to Fitness. So what we're gonna do today is watch a little clip of episode one together. I'm gonna react to it in real time. So grab yourself a cup of tea, get comfortable. We're gonna watch part of it together and then you can watch the full episode on horseandcountry.tv. The link will be in the description. All right, I've got Horse and Country up in front of me. So let's dive in. <laughs> Even the top eventers can't escape the mud. Just saying. Okay, not that this is relevant to the video, but I love drone footage. I have been thinking about getting a drone for my channel or at least renting one out. So if you love drone footage as well, let me know in the comments below. I just think capturing horses cantering from above, capturing horses doing dressage, pole work, jumping, it all looks so cool. And this kind of shot is honestly the dream for me. So let me know if you also love this. Welcome to From Field to Fitness with EquiSafety, your ultimate guide to getting your horse to its first event. Okay, firstly, EquiSafety are amazing. This is where I got my high-vis wraparound sheet from. I'll link it out for you in the description below. EquiSell, a load of EquiSafety stuff. I really rate their high-vis. And secondly, Simon Grieve is also the trainer of Rebecca, who you might have met from the Half Holt Ambassadors video just a few weeks ago. So he really is quite something special. If you're worried about when your horse has been on holiday, when to get it back into work, mm -hmm. when to walk, trot, canter, and even jump, then you've come to the right place. We've spoken to some of the best riders in the world to find out what they do and how they go about preparing for that really important event. Not only that, we've also got information about things like saddle fit and making sure that your horse looks really, really good for turnout, clipping, cutting. So everything you need for an event is right here. Now this is fantastic because obviously I'm on the lookout for my own horse at the moment and I know some of you are as well and I think not only is this great for when you've got a horse back in from the field but also if you have a new horse I think it's just a good idea to check how fit they are, check their saddle, check that everything fits as it should because they're new to you so really it's a clean slate so hopefully I'm hoping I can get some good ideas for that out of here as well. So eventing is a really exciting sport, yes, full it of is. adrenaline, full of excitement, but I'm afraid it's going to be a bit boring to start with. We've got to get some admin bits sorted. We've got to first of all think about the plan that we're going to make. Well, this is no problem for me. As you guys know, I love a spreadsheet, so I am all ready for this. And not so long ago, I had a chat with Imogen Murray about how she makes a plan with her horses. Oh my gosh, do you remember Imogen Murray? I actually did her masterclass not that long ago. She looked really fabulous and I thoroughly enjoyed giving that a go. So her masterclass is also on Horse and Country, so I'll link it out for you in the description. So I have a spreadsheet at home. Um, that okay, I know we're supposed to be listening to the fitness things, but can we just take a look at that clock in the background with the, with the tail moving? Okay, okay, I'll go back to it. We send out to all the owners. And basically what I tend to do is I go through... We have a look at, we discuss with the owners and everything about what each horse's big aim for the season is. Yeah. Um, whether that be sort of, obviously Charles would be to go to badminton. Um, for, we'd work in half season, obviously, the first half of the season. Um, what I would then do is write down those events because they're the ones that we're sort of definitely aiming for. And then we, I tend to then work back with those with obviously the horses that are going to the biggest competitions they tend to take priority so we fill in their plan first and then obviously the other horses that are competing at international level will sort of put their plan in alongside that and then the younger horses tend to fit in around that with what's on each weekend and like I, I'd pull up a spreadsheet that's got which competition we're going to which horses are going on each day for I love this so much these spreadsheets I really want one sort of I normally do about six weeks at a time or they'll have their big aim at the end of that so I know we're working towards yeah um and then most of the horses like the older horses will probably run every third week so at the beginning of the season just to get them going so this clip that you can see here this is one of the master classes that i tried out i tried out part of image and murray's master class i'll link it for you um up above you can try it out yourself one of the earlier exercises from this master class so it tends to work quite well because we normally alternate the weekends sort of we'll have 
you know, the horses competing at novice intermediate level going out one week and then the horses that are competing at the lower levels will go out another week. So it does tend to work reasonably well unless there's some drama, like all the events get cancelled and then it's yeah. a, a little bit of a headache. A <laughs> little bit of a possibility this year, to be honest. Not <laughs> Now, that plan works great if, like Imogen, you know exactly what you have coming up and on what dates. But what happens if, like me, you don't yet know what events you're going to be doing over the summer or when your season might start? Well, I had this question too, so I caught up with executive producer and presenter for Horse & Country, Jenny Ruddle, to ask her exactly what we should be doing if this is our first season. Let's go into it. So Jenny, thank you for jumping on with me for a few minutes. I've just been watching Fields of Fitness, which is your new show on Horse & Country, and I realised that while I was watching it, whilst Imogen knows what events she has coming up in the calendar and she knows where she wants her horses to be, for someone like me who doesn't necessarily have an event in mind but knows that they sort of want their horse fit for the summer what would your advice be in that case because i know i was talking to you and i thought oh maybe we should get them fit for july and actually <laughs> it's not quite the right answer is it well it just it depends i mean everyone kind of this series really um is targeted at everybody and it's also even if you don't want to event it's a great little kind of sneak peek at, at what the eventers do and that's what i've really been enjoying like oh you will do it differently it's really it's actually quite interesting um but if you are completely new to the sport and you're thinking oh, i'm just going to event in the summer sometimes that's actually not the best way to think about it not and um, holding off getting your horse fit because this is the time now where you can do the boring work this is the time where um i know you haven't got your horse yet but hopefully they'll have some kind of semblance of fitness yeah. but just like uh, this morning i took my horse out for a walk trot hack because it was wet and it was miserable and the outdoor was flooded and i was like do you know what it needs to be done so this is the kind of time to do that because Yes, there might not be very many events that you want to go to at the beginning of the season. You might not be confident yet, but that's when you want to go training. That's when the clinics are on. That's when Lucinda Green will be out doing a clinic or all the likes of Imogen will be doing clinics. And they're super fun. But if you go in your horses and they don't have to be really fit at horses at this level, schooling fit is fit enough. But um, if you haven't kind of done that kind of groundwork and had a bit of schooling and, and done a bit of kind of what we suggest in, in this series, you're going to go and waste your time. Do you know what I mean? You're just going to have a horse that's probably a bit naughty that you're not used to. Um, so just for that reason, it's good to kind of be aiming at when the weather's a bit better, just to have that kind of, have the first jumps at home done and have, have your trot and your canter work done. Um, but then the beginning of this season as well, even if you can fit a run in it, it if you don't want to aim for March, April, when the ground might be a bit wet and it's a bit miserable still, um, if you can aim for May, those events are actually more targeted for younger horses. So a, a, a 90 or an 80 even, or a nine, especially 90 and 100s, they'll be easier at Tweezledown at the beginning of the season than they will be at the end of the season. Yeah. Um, because the course designers are, are aiming for you to progress. They want to give you confidence. They understand horses are probably coming out for the first time. So they're not going to look to trip you up. And then if they've got another 100 later on in the season, they're gonna jazz things up a little bit. So if you don't go out until Tweezle down number three, um, you're gonna be hitting a harder Tweezle down at that level, only slightly, don't, don't get me wrong, it's not gonna be terrifying, but there just might be a few extra little questions in there that actually, if you'd have gone out earlier, you'll be then not rocking those questions later on. So I think kind of aiming for the summer, great, but don't be scared to kind of put a few in your diary earlier, even if you just go and use them as a schooling round so you can see the questions or and just go and have fun at them. And then also it gives you time to progress. Yeah. Um, you can tell I'm quite passionate about it. I teach a lot of people oh, um, at this level. Um, but yeah, it, if you've got a goal, say it's to do an 80, go and do a 70 mm. um, and we'll go do a 60 or go and do a training show or a hunter trial or something early on because um you might then go oh i've got the confidence to do a 70 by june and then actually by august september you might be doing a 90 or 100 do you yeah. see what i mean but if you have given yourself your chance to do it early you then won't actually get any progression and you might even if you just have a bash at something higher by the end of the season um you then can go into the next season knowing what you can do do you know what I mean it's so true and I didn't even think you think about summertime and you're like oh that's when I'll be out but I didn't think about the fact you're right all the training clinics all the fun stuff that you want to do is earlier and I absolutely I didn't even it didn't even cross my mind that of course the courses get more difficult over the season that's the nature of eventing I guess 
so it's really helpful and something I think a lot of people wouldn't have thought about before um yeah and just have fun with it I think especially like if you're new to it we cover all the basics in this show about kind of tacking up to what to wear and everything and it can kind of be a bit of a mind even the unaffiliated is like oh my god oh my god but actually everyone's there to help each other out and you just gotta have fun with it and if you run out of the dressage boards have every show jump down and get eliminated cross country just pour yourself a Prosecco at the end and enjoy the fact you've had a day in the sun, hopefully, if it hasn't rained. I love that. Thank you so much, Jenny. That's really helpful. No worries. And I love watching your video. So thanks. Nice to be on one. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness. I'm such a big fan. A fan <laughs> talking to a fan. No, thank you. That's great. I think that will make a really nice little clip, actually, um, for everyone. So. No worry. It's a great to hear from Imogen there. But it's really important that we make sure that the horses are really healthy before we even start. We need to look at their shoeing get the physio in and also one thing that's really important is this saddle fit and i'm really excited because we've got andy on the yard today so let's go and see him to talk about what we look for in good saddle fit so i'm going to leave it there you can of course watch the entire episode on horse and country tv and if you're enjoying this let me know in the comments and i will be sure to do episode two so we can continue this over a series of months and have a short clip and i'm sure that simon will be giving us more tips in the next few episodes about how to get our horses fit all the way up to that event so let's stay tuned and i will see you next time bye